now, just so that you know, the rules of recording are that I'm going to record during the entire webinar session, and I do keep it very interactive. So ask your questions in the question box. That's why you need to find it as well. But if something's lengthy or it's very specific or very personal, then I'll save that to the end. Know that I turn off the recording for that part. Sorry, the live Q&A, the lengthy Q&A is only available to those who are here in person who stayed and stuck out with me. And it's important also because I do stay, even though the webinar time may end, I'll be respectful of your time and end on time if not beforehand. But it's also important for you to know that if you have any questions, I will still hang out with you as long as you have your questions and you're asking me. All right. Deal, everybody? All right, I do see you, Virginia, Tasha, I see you there, there as well. Hello, hello, Danique, I see you too. Stacy, welcome, hello, Stacy, and welcome to our wonderful Google partners who invited you. If you have any questions, they are the person, people to reach out to the organizations because they're right there, really vested in your success. My name is Maria Elena, Maria Elena Duran. Let me get that advance there. This is who I am. I come from a small business background, so know that I've been in small business 20 plus years. I've been in international e-commerce for 12 years. My focus has been highly on making sure that you're visible because if people can't do business with you, they don't know that you're visible and they can't do business with you because of that. It's important for you to show up here and more importantly for you to show up on the first page of an organic Google search. So we'll go into detail into that. So let's do our deep dive, but this is who I am. You can find me on socials everywhere. And today we're going to be talk talking about our local business bootcamp and how you can get your local business found on Google search and maps. So I'd like to know in the question box. Now I want this to be you to be truthful and you're just going to put a number there how many of the free google tools because everything that i'm talking about today is 100 percent free and even though i may mention not in this webinar but mention in future webinars and future of boot camp so as we go through all the different series and topics that we have in boot camp this week i may touch google ads i know that's a paid that's an actual paid program, but there are free aspects of it that I'm gonna teach you how to use because I'm a bootstrap marketer and I believe in free or small fee because you gotta keep that cash flow going, right? Especially if you just started your business. So I want you to be truthful and tell me uh, from the count, I'm gonna give you a few names of different Google tools and just count them out in your mind, how many that you're actually using and then put the number in the question box. So there is Google Business Profile, formerly known as Google My Business and a Google Listing. Are you using that? So just that would be number one that you'd have one item, but maybe you have two items. Do you use Google Search Console, Google Analytics, either Universal Analytics or Google Analytics 4? Google Ads, Google, so it's Google Merchant Center if you've got a product, okay? So if you don't have a product, you wouldn't use Merchant Center, but Google Merchant Center for product, and then YouTube. So that's six tools that I've told you. And yes, YouTube is owned by Google. By the way, it's the number two search engine in the world, only second to Google, which is number one, and all are owned by Google. So that's why it's really important for you to use and understand how Google search works. So of the six Google tools that I just shared with you, how many are you using? Let me throw a seventh one in there, Google Tag Manager. That's the one that was trying to escape me earlier. I couldn't think of. All right, so I see YouTube. Some people have two, some, ooh, we've got power users here. Some are using five. All right, perfect. Don't worry, if you're just getting started, I'm gonna be talking about how you can set up your Google business profile because a lot of people set it up quickly on the fly and I know they've done that when I ask the next question. How many of you, by a Y or an N. So yes, if you are doing this, no, if you're not, how many of you are posting to your Google business profile? So you're posting there at least, at least every five days. How many of you, wonderful. So I do see some are posting there every five days. How many are using the free website within your Google business profile that's available to you? Yes or no, just a Y or N. Okay, and how many of you posted offers and events on your Google business profile? All right, get an idea here. This gives me a chance to customize this exactly for you. Again, if you're just coming in and you need closed captions, use this link here. You're gonna open up a new tab. Use the little gear at the very top to customize the font size and everything that you need. If you need to find me, this is my Twitter handle here, Maria Duran, D-U-R-O-N, 
or on Instagram. Feel free to tag me or tweet out. If you are tweeting or posting, if you'll use the hashtag grow with Google, it lets the Google team know that this matters to you and encourages them to put more boot camps out for us. So let's go ahead and dive in. This boot camp, of course, is brought to you by your local partners, and they actually invited me to come train you and help you to become more visible with your local business. So we will be talking about your Google business profile because it is one of the powerhouse tools that you can use to stay visible, especially for a local business. Now, understand that people are searching for you for every reason, from wanting to know whether or not you exist, whether or not you survived past 2020, or even whether you have that product or inventory available to them. They're looking, so even if they're across the street, they're still looking online. Remember, we know go do, do or buy here. 74% of us go here first. How to create a business profile, we'll make sure you optimize the profile, how to manage that business info and the resources. If you need me to slow down, let me know in the question box. There are a few of you here who are using many, many tools where this might seem that you've already done this, make sure you've optimized it though, because there are many things that people do when they set things up that they still don't optimize for maximum visibility, all right? Having some tech, okay. Stacy, if you're having some tech difficulties, call in, all right? Call into the phone number that I provided at the very beginning, because sometimes that's a browser update and I can't control that, but you can by calling in and you'll catch the audio, okay? Ah, perfect, Stacy. All right, well, I'm gonna make it even more challenging because I'm gonna bring in a video. Let us listen to Vince. Now, if we lose audio during the video, if you do, that means that you need to switch from computer to phone. Give me a few minutes, let me go ahead and show you Vince. My name is Vince. This is my shop. I opened Village Tailor and Cleaners in 1977. I arrived in New York four years earlier from Italy. It was me, my brother, my mom, and my dad. My mother taught me how to sew. When I opened the shop, the first person I hired was my mother. This is Bruno, the store mascot. My Lula advertisement. As a business owner, you're always thinking, how can you do better? I notice that customers come in with the clothes in one hand and the phone on the other, always looking up information. So I said to myself, we have to put this store online. Google lets me decide how the shop shows up. I pick photos. I can post special hours, anything. I made this website in 10 minutes using the website builder. And I'm not kidding. Now people walk in and I'm always asking, how did you find us? They used to say, I saw Bruno, so I came in. Now they say, Google. Believe it or not, we're up 30% this year. We're doing enough business, I had to hire more tailors and get some new machines. I've got three shops going. And my son, Vincent Jr., is running one of them the village cobbler next door. I'm in an old-fashioned profession. I work with my hands. I hadn't thought much about putting the business online. Now, I couldn't be happier. Village tailor, 40 years and going strong. To our screen here our slides all right got vince there he had a chance to meet vince i understand very much so i'm a family-owned business i started my business my three sons actually lead my business my three adult sons right now lead our business i should say and it's been wonderful to do that so i do understand the dynamics of a family-owned business by the way if you want a copy of today's slides then make sure you hang out for a few more minutes because i'm going to give that to you in a moment but you will get a copy of the recording just because you've commented. You do have to comment in the question box in order to get a copy of today's recording. 
All right, so I do see there are a couple of questions because there was a question about how to get a copy of the recording, how to get a copy of the slides, but then there's also a question from Heidi, which is, can you use Google Business Profile as an Etsy seller and artist or craft supplies? I'll show you how to creatively use that, right? It does not connect as far as to your Etsy. You can connect your website there, so it does work that way. Google Analytics doesn't work with that, but I will show you how you can creatively use that to maximize your visibility because it's important that we're visible. If people don't know that we exist, they can't do business with us. So let's dive in and talk about the Google Business Profile. Yes, yes, absolutely, Charles, you're very welcome. So this is what it looks like. Remember what I said, most go on a mobile device first. You'll see your name up here. You'll see photos and videos, so good visual branding, and we know that's important. Hey, think TikTok, right? Quick links to get you exactly and get somebody who's searching for your product, service, or solution exactly where they need to go, your location, and your hours of operation, and your phone number. This is all key because understand if they see that you're open, let's say they're searching for some product or supply and they see that you locally have that, they see you have it in inventory and they see that you're open, they go to your location and you're closed, what happens is they're not mad at Google, they're mad at you. And that's all a part of the first impression they have of you. And it's very lasting. You have the ability to control all of your information on Google. And I can always tell when people don't know that because they don't claim and verify their Google business profile and they don't take control of their site on what Google can see through Google Search Console. Those two tools are how you tell Google what you want people to see and also helps make sure you're relevant. So relevancy is the number one part of the three pillars of the algorithm that determines what shows up on the first page of an organic Google search. Now do know that relevancy means that you have to match what people are searching for. This is very important because we search on search and we search on maps and we all have different actions that we take after we do each. But understanding how people search and the words and the terms that they use when they're searching is truly important. Now, a lot of times we are experts at our business. So we get in our own headspace about the lingo that we use, but we don't think about the way that people search. So I want to tell you that during the whole lockdown and the pandemic, that during that time when people needed tech support what they did first is they went to google they went to search first it's the 96 percent utilize google first as the number one search engine in the world youtube being number two they searched there as well and what they found what we found is the words people searched with when they were looking for tech support they did not type in tech support they typed in or said hey google hey alexa i hate my computer it's really important for you to understand that lesson because if you make the mistake that so many local businesses do is that they think, oh, people search this way, but they don't really listen and pay attention to how people search, then you will not miss, may, you'll not match with them and you'll miss them and you will not be relevant. So therefore you fail in the first pillar of the algorithm to show up in the first page of an organic Google search. Now every, <clears throat> excuse me, every organic search result page comes up with 10 organic search results. You have to show up on page one. People do not look past page one. So we used to say a couple of years ago that people would look at the first three pages, the first 30 organic searches. That's not true anymore. It's the first page. If you don't show up there, then you don't exist and people cannot do business with you. So how are you showing up there? One of the ways is utilizing your Google business profile. See how prominently it sits there on the right hand side, giving you good visual real estate and good branding. Again, you want to be consistent with your branding, which means your photos, your words need to be consistent across all your social profiles, your website, everywhere you appear online, because this builds trust when they see consistency in branding. But you need to also understand the words that people search with. So I'm gonna pose you with three questions. Number one is when people know that you exist and they know that you have a product or service that can serve them, how are they searching for you? How do your customers find you? Let me know in the question box, okay? And let me see, can you please address how you use Google with a mobile business? Yes, absolutely, Alicia, I will, because I'll show you that in just a few moments. It's about four slides away, so give me just a moment, we'll go through that, and if you still have questions, I'll come back and answer that or ask me in the question box, okay? All right, Jordan, trying to open a business. Absolutely, oh, appliance business and home repair. Welcome, Jordan. Any other questions before we get on? 
I'm not Stacy. No worries, Stacy. If you're not up and running yet, when are you up and running? Because you can use your Google business profile and it will even promote your business 90 days out. So it'll showcase it on search and maps if you want it to show up on maps. But if you don't want to show it up on maps, you can actually suppress that. And I'll teach you how today. Okay added new photos recently but the old photos still show up yes amanda they do because what happens is it's the photos that have been there the longest that are the most popular so a lot of times when i'm working with resorts especially they'll have people take photos of people's knobby knees and their toes in the sand and that's not the picture they want of their beautiful resort but it is user generated content that's known as UGC user generated content and that is so valuable because people are more interested in what their friends and family members say they're people they know like and trust than a business because all day long we can say we're amazing the way you win at that is by consistently posting your photos so it's not just a one shot you need to post if you get into the habit maybe put into your schedule every Friday you update and put photos up there that'll help your photos raise up to the top and they get a little bit more weight with the algorithm so they'll show up higher okay but it does take consistency right marketing is not a silver bullet it is consistent persistent action it's not sexy right all right so for those of you who thought were thinking about it well the second question is if they don't know your name but they know that there's a product or service that can serve them how are they searching for you I've seen pediatric dentists orthodontists actually think that people search for orthodontic care or that people are searching for would like orthodontic surgery. People are going on Facebook, screaming in their feed to everyone saying, hey, can you recommend somebody who can straighten my kiddo's teeth? He's 13, okay? Are you using those words? That's really important to do that and understand how people search. It really is important for you to understand and be an expert at your customer. And that means listening to them. One of the best ways to listen is, especially if you're just getting started, but if you've never done this before as an established business, try it today because it'll be eye-opening. But go to your competitor sites and read their reviews. Read their reviews and find out what words people use that they're giving them so many kudos and accolades about and find out what they're best at and then also find out what they're not good at because maybe you fill in that gap. Maybe you're better at that particular item that is not their sweet spot or their strength. So take a look at that. That's some good competitive research that's available right there for the public eye, all right? So now, if they don't know that you exist and they have no idea that there's a product or service that can serve them, how are they searching for you? What words are they using? Because a lot of times people are struggling with something and they don't even know that anybody else has dealt with this before. So what are the words? Remember what I said about the importance of relevancy, right? All right, I see some questions here. Uh, I do a lot of in-person marketing for our customers to find us. We also, okay, perfect, wonderful. No, Rachel, no worries. Hello, Rachel, good to see you here. So this is a great way for you to utilize this and be somewhere where people are not. So let's say for example, nobody's listening on the radio just for example let's say they're all listening to whatever's on spotify they're not listening to their radio but when they're ready to know go do or buy or when they're searching for something they head to google first and look for information or maybe they want to figure out a how to so they go to youtube first right and try to figure out how they can do it yourself diy <clears throat> and so they're trying to can actually complete something and get to a solution and they do that by looking on YouTube. Are you showing up there where they're looking? Because I'm a big, big fan of fishing where the fish are. So it takes a tremendous amount of time, energy and money to get people to look over here when they're all over here, right? So if they're spending time over here, how can you get them to get their eyeballs over here? When we go through the session of the boot camp called reach customers online. I'll teach you how to look and see what's popular and trending right now within your local area within the last hour, which will not just help you on what to put in your Google business profile, but also what do you post on social, right? Because you always have that question, what do we post about today? This will give you some real good strategy as well as meet people where they are, fish where the fish are, make sense? All right, I see also here, Pamela, you're here. They find you on Facebook, yes, absolutely. But understand not everyone's on Facebook, right? Not everybody's there. So again, what I like to do is I like to repurpose whatever I've posted on any of the social sites for Google, right? Because you wanna be there and be where the fish are. Now understand, Google is where people go when they need information. 
So when they need information, what they'll do is they'll go to Google first. The intent is totally different. Sometimes when we're on socials, we're just going along, looking at things. And even though we scroll past it, that gives us an impression. That doesn't mean somebody actually saw it. They resonated with it. But if I want to know, how, where do I find that blouse that I just saw my friend wearing? Now I'm looking with great intent and I'm trying to find that. So I'm paying attention. And that a lot of times happens on Google. But a lot of times you'll see in Instagram reels, people do this or that, right? Do you like this? Do you like this color or do you like that color? So we'll do that kind of play there. What you can do is take that now, that same post that you used in Instagram story or reel and take that and say, you know what? Here in Dallas, 75% of us prefer this color. Are you, are you, you know, are you somebody who prefers that? We have that in stock. Okay. So you can take that information and still make it relevant for Google because people go to Google when they want information. So do keep that in mind, not to be social and have conversation. This is now where they really want to go and look for information, whether they're there in the looking zone or beforehand when they have a problem or something they need a solution for. Okay. All right. Some, some great questions here, Tasha. Um, you said, I'm in the process of building a wedding business. Yes, yes, you can actually look at this too. A lot of wedding, wedding planners and DJs utilize Google Business Profile quite a bit. And let's see, can I see your question? Alexis, no, it must have scrolled past. So if you could post it again, because a lot of times if it gets busy in the question box, it may have scrolled past. Understand this is an eight point font that I'm looking at when I look at the question box. It doesn't get any bigger except for the white space around it. It just gets bigger. The actual font doesn't. So if I miss you, I am not purposely trying to miss you. Just means that it scrolled past. So it's, it, keep it really short too, because sometimes if you make it a really, really long question, it's a lot to consume while I'm trying to read and you all are just looking at me reading, right? So let's Let's go in how we create a business profile. Now you saw that the slide before you saw you can go to google.com slash business. So if you'll go to google.com slash business, that will take you where you need to go. Now you do have to have a Google account. If you have a Gmail account, you're golden. All you need to do is log into your Gmail account. You'll go back here into google.com slash business. You'll click sign in. It will refresh. It'll recognize your credentials and you're in just like that. But let's say you don't have a Gmail account and you don't want one you have your email address and you love it. Not to worry. What you can do is go right here, look at the bottom left-hand corner and you'll see the URL here that you can go to and you can sign up for a free Google account. Now you don't have to start a Gmail account, but do know that with your personal free Gmail account, so that's not even the paid workspace account, you have all access to all the free Google tools. So you don't need anything but a free personal Gmail account or a free Google account. Sign up here, you don't need to change it to Gmail at all. You're going to enter your email address and create a password. And like any other password protected site online, you'll use this to log in. It does not change your email to Gmail unless you say you want Gmail. And you have to let us that know that with a few clicks. So it's more than just one simple click process, okay? Once you have your free Google account, now what you'll do is go to that google.com slash business site log in there or refresh and then it'll pick up your credentials and you're going to type your business name in here now do understand it's picking up every business that has that name within the united states so it's not just to oklahoma it is not just to culver city it is not just to tarleton state university area it's none of that it is going to pick up everything there make sure you select the one that is you if you do not show up there then you do need to type in your business here's a marketer's hint type in the actual name of your business as it appears on utility bills. Because sometimes to verify that you're the owner of the business, you will, in some cases, need to show a utility statement, a phone statement, a bank statement. You can redact all the other personal information, but they're looking for the address and that name. And if you're doing a DBA that you've not officially proclaimed somewhere and have papers for that, then use your actual business name here. You can change it to what everybody in the community knows it as later. All right, now you're gonna put your name here. You're gonna choose a business category. Understand there are 3,000 different business categories. Choose the one that's closest to you. After you've claimed and verified your business, now you'll have the opportunity to choose nine subcategories. If you've not done that yet, then choose nine subcategories that help showcase what makes you so unique. And you truly need to understand what is your unique selling proposition. This is what makes you so valuable and why somebody would step over your competitors to do business with you. 
All right, so do know, choose one category right now. When you've verified your business, you'll have the opportunity to add nine subcategories. Do not miss that opportunity. Now, many of you have been asking about Etsy, online businesses, or that you have a mobile business, so you don't wanna put your address, or let's say you're home-based. And do not believe the myths that you, if you're a home-based or by appointment only business, that you can't claim your business profile. You absolutely can. You're just gonna suppress your address. I work with a lot of local skincare consultants who can people can buy online from corporate headquarters, which is miles away, but they want people to come to them. They just don't want them to come to them at five o'clock in the morning when they need soap or when they need lotion. They want them to be able to find that they are in the area, their local skincare consultant. So what you can do is click no if you bring your product and service to your customers, no matter how you bring that to them. So let me start with the first answer, yes. Say yes if you have and want foot traffic. You're a bar, you're a salon, you're a store, you are an office like a real estate office or maybe an insurance office or a chamber of commerce or the United Way. Whatever you want foot traffic and people to come in, then you say yes here. You want your address to show prominently on Google search and Google maps. But if you do not want it to show up, so let's say you put no, you're a skincare consultant, you, you do facials online or offline. Maybe you sell in your Etsy shop and you do ship a lot of things, but you also bring locally to people like your, your child's teacher, the head of the PTA, your friend that you go to Tuesday wine day with, or it could be that you bring it to church. Wherever you bring it, if you physically bring it at any moment to anyone, you bring it to your mother-in-law. Now you can click no you deliver your products and services to the customers at their location. If you are by appointment only, this is how you handle this as well. You say no, because then you'll put the information in the actual description, but you don't want your address to show up. Let's say you're a carpet installer and you go take the carpet to people's houses. You have a warehouse that is where you store things, but it's not public facing. In fact, it might even be dangerous for people to walk in. This is where you click no. The answer here is no, all right? So I'll come back to some questions here in just a moment, but I wanna make sure that you understand this. Yes, if you want your address to show up. No, if you don't, but you wanna show that you serve that area. Now, the next thing you'll do is after you decide that, whether you say yes or no, now you're gonna be asked for your address. This confuses many people. The reason we ask for the address is because the only way, 99% of the way that we confirm that you are the actual business owner is by sending a postcard that looks nothing like a postcard, right? It is actually, it looks like a, a W-2 with perforations on the side and top, but the reason that happens is it's verifying that you're the business owner and it sends it to the mailing address. So we need that address for that. But if you click no in the section before you get to this, so before you click next, you click no and you get here, it's not going to showcase your address on there unless you tell us to showcase that. And I'll tell you how a lot of people make mistakes in telling us to show the address, okay? So take a look at this. This is where you put your actual mailing address. PO boxes do not work here. So you need an actual mailing address. I was working with a local community theater, all right? So it's a community theater. They have auditions there, they keep their props there, people go to see plays there. So it's an actual physical location, but they don't get mail there, they had a PO box. And what the executive director did is he went in here and he said no, let me go back here and said no, that he didn't want to showcase his address at all. He put his home address, once he was able to secure the postcard and get the five digit verification code in there to verify that he could control and manage the business online, then he went in and changed the address, all right? Now, what you can do is if you've clicked no, you can start putting service areas in. Do you serve this area? So in my case, I live in Midland, Texas. I'm at the base of the panhandle. If you put 79707, or if I put Midland, the city of Midland, or even the county of Midland, that counts as one service area. This is important for you to understand that the power of Google Business Profile is local. That's its superpower, power. it's hyper-local focus. If you try to expand the world here and reach anybody, everybody, and somebody, you'll get their second cousin nobody because your business profile will not show up in search at all. You've diluted the effectiveness of this tool. It is meant for local. That's its purpose. You can use worldwide for any other tool, but for Google Business Profile, it is local focused. Now, when I say local, it is within 100 miles of where you actually serve. Actually serve. 
So understand, this could be 100 miles from a location. It could be, let's say, you're not showing your actual location, but you do need to stay as close and local as possible. And here's the reason why. Number one, it's the power of the tool. If you get past 100 miles, you're not going to show up in Google search. In fact, I coach businesses to stay within 25 to 35 miles, which is huge. When you live in rural West Texas and it's 110 miles down to San Angelo and you might go there for a luncheon and come back in a day. So that's down the road for us. But 110 miles is too much for the tool to be able to accommodate. So now I've really wasted my time in utilizing the tool. I want to build the effectiveness of the tool. So that means keeping it hyper local focus. And I explain and coach to businesses to stay within 25 to 35 miles and use other tools to reach worldwide, but use this to dominate showing up in Google search and also to build your reviews. Understand you may serve the world or nationwide, but if you don't have enough reviews, you're not going to have a good competitive advantage at all. When I say enough reviews, your five stars, your five gold stars show up in your reviews after you have 60, six zero reviews. If you only have 15 now, not good enough. You need to get to 60. To be able to compete on any stage, you need to have 60 great reviews. That's why I do like to keep it hyper local because before you started your business, or even if you're just starting your business, you still know people. You existed before the business existed. So you can go to your local teacher, your mentor, your friend, your family members, your pastor. You can go to somebody that you served on volunteer boards with and say, listen, I would love if you could help me out here. I'm starting my business or I'm growing my business and could you leave me a great review? Now you have people within arm's length that you can ask face to face that you would like a great review and can they help you out? Or if even with your customers saying, you know what, if I've helped you and you think other people are experiences, experiencing the same challenge, would you mind leaving a review to help them out? And a lot of people, when you word it that way, will do that, but most are not asked. In fact, most people, 98% say they will leave a great review, but they're never asked. Right, So a lot of times we need to ask, and a lot of times it's our own mental barrier and our limits that we put on ourselves that we don't even ask, or we just get busy. So here in your service areas, you can choose this quickly and be able to build that area and get those 60 great reviews. Now, 60 is the minimum to start out with. That just gets you in the door as far as visible. But understand that if you're in an e-commerce business, about 121 five-star reviews are minimum to be able to get involved with an e-commerce business, okay? So you need that many good reviews. This is that moment when I do need to tell businesses, you've got to nail it before you scale it. This is an important lesson for you to learn. Just because you throw more people at it, if it's all broken, your messaging's not right, your service isn't right, your product sucks, any of that, that is all not going to get better just by throwing more numbers at it. It's all going to show up here in the small little microcosm of the pond, and now you can nail it before you scale it. Okay, now you could put your business contact information here, put that in, put your website if you have a website. If you don't have a website, you can click that here. Don't worry about it. We'll go back how to customize that later. And now you get to choose, but know that this option is usually not even lit up. You don't have that option. 99% of the time, it's the postcard by mail. Put a contact name so you don't lose track of it. A lot of people throw it away because it doesn't look like a postcard. It looks like an ad because it does look like that W-2 with perforations in the top and bottom. It's a little bit bigger. So they throw it away. Put your contact name in there and you know anything that will help denote that. Plus, let anybody know who's picking up the mail that you're looking for this because this is really, really important. Do make sure that you're completely verified before you try to change anything on your Google business profile. A lot of businesses, their number one mistake here is they see something, they send it off. So double check your work. They look to mail it and it's on its way. And now they realize, oh, I have a typo in there or I was going to add this and put this. So they go back in and they try to change it and you get stuck in this horrible verification loop that you'll never get out of. It takes a tremendous amount of time to get out of it. And you usually have to start again. So let's not put any obstacles where we don't need them to be and just get this done right. Check your work before you send off to mail it, mail it. Because we've all done that where we sent something off but when we've checked it 300 times. And then as soon as we send it off, now we actually see the mistake. So I do see some, there are some questions there and I'm gonna get there in just a moment, everybody. So don't, don't worry, I am gonna get to your questions. I do wanna make sure that people know how to add services here. So with, because of the category that you chose, 
while this postcard is now off waiting for you, actually on its way, so you've sent off for it and it's on its way to you, you still can do things, but it's not going to show up publicly yet because it doesn't publish until you verify that you're the owner. But because of the category you've chosen, now you can go here and choose and look and see what suggested services for that business category. Plus, you can also see down here, add custom services. So you can do that too. And you can also put your business hours in. Remember what I said about the importance of your business hours and how much that actually weighs on the first impression somebody has of your business, okay? Now, let me see, I see some questions here. So let me go to the questions real quick. Um, let's see, oops, uh, let's go back down here. It did not, question box scrolled all the way to the top again. I got email to my work email saying I have an account, but I can't log in. Um, how do I access? Okay, Sharon, you are going to have to get with Google directly. So when you are there, there's a little question mark or support or help. Click on there and you can actually connect with somebody live in chat or they'll help you via email, but they're going to have to help you because um, with the with passwords, we have no access to that. So it is a, a process that you have to go through to be able to access that. Okay. Um, to receive the postcard about Charles, it takes about five business days. I tell people five to 10 business days to receive the postcard, but about five business days. They've been running pretty good like that lately. It's been really, really close to the five business days. Um, let's see, for, do you, oh, absolutely. Absolutely, I wanna draw more than just, okay. Alexis, I never did see your question and I never saw the repost of it. So if you could come back in and put that in, I don't wanna ignore your question, I just never saw it. So please let me know. All right. I didn't see any other questions, but use the question box for that. Charles, thanks so much for your question. Everybody, Sharon, you'll say thank you, Frederick. So here, you can also add messaging. Now, when you add messaging, you can accept messages. And what will happen is within your Google business profile, online in the dashboard or within Maps, because the Google business profile, the old Google My Business app is going away. So you need to use Google Maps to be able to access and see this information and be logged into the account that you are using to manage this. You're gonna click accept messages. That means people can message you just like they're text messaging you, but they don't see your mobile phone number. So you may not want somebody randomly texting you at five o'clock in the morning. So you don't want them to have your mobile number, but you want to access and be able to reply to customers when they have questions. A lot of times the person that is answering the question is the one who earns the business. So sometimes, let's say today you're in the webinar and you wanna make sure that messaging is added, you might have two or three other people on your team or at your store be able to answer those questions and also to see this and have this delivered to their phone too. I'll show you how you can decide user access in just a few moments. Now, understand this is text messaging, just like text messaging without them seeing your mobile phone, but the speed of text message is very much instant. Understand that if you don't reply to somebody in a text message in about six hours, they're thinking now that you don't want to reply to them. They're having some really kind of angry, upset feelings about this. And then if you don't reply in 24 hours, sometimes with email, we can wait about 24 hours, we're golden still. <clears throat> with this or any text message, no, you're not golden after 24 hours. They're pretty mad at you by that time because they needed you instantly is why they messaged you. I know we're an instant gratification community, right? All right, this is now your chance to add your business description. This is really important because you only have 750 characters. A character is a letter, a space, or a, a, a period, a question mark, so it could be a punctuation mark. But it is where you only have 750 of all those to say who you are, and that's why it's important for you to do all the heavy lifting in your business and understand and be an expert in your customer and know their words. Only you can do the research for that and look for that, but there are a lot of tools that can help you along the way. Get out of your head with your professional or industry speak and really find out about your customers and the pain points and what they need help with. In fact, I encourage people to try to understand their customers before they're in what's known as the looking zone. So when somebody's looking for, let's say a photographer, okay because I saw a couple of you with a photography business in here so let's say they're looking for a photographer right well when I'm looking for a photographer I'm already in that state I need a photographer now what happens is people start searching by price alone because we all become commodities right so now this photographer is, is cheaper than this one and this one can do this but if we can get them steps beforehand what do they look like before they need a photographer what is it did they just get engaged um, did they just find out that they were pregnant 
did their child just graduate from kindergarten or just graduate from high school or did their child just start high school what are those key moments where people decide now oh i need to start looking into things where you can help them as an expert in your industry capture them before they're in the looking zone connect with them and now start sharing with them what's happening and what are some of the pitfalls that they can actually encounter and now you help them avoid those pitfalls when you can come and do that you're seen as a trusted advisor and people will step over dollars to do business with people they know like and trust so if you do a better job articulating what somebody needs and the problems that they have they will see you as the person who has the solution as well so become an expert in your customer that's really where a lot of time needs to be spent in you understanding your customer inside and out now this is also a place here where you can add photos here remember what i said earlier about how you can customize your photos and really make sure those are showing up i'm not going to talk about google ads here but i will when we talk about that session during boot camp and understand i'll show you how you can use elements of it for free now, when you're waiting for verification, again, it's five business days, you'll enter the verification code here. That's exactly where you verify. Once you've claimed and verified and put that code in, now you can start making adjustments. So we'll talk more here now about how to manage and optimize that. You can do it directly on Google search. You can do that right there. If you are logged into the Google account or the Gmail account that you created your account with, you can log in and you can edit your profile and do all of these things, promote, see who your customers are that are following you and get to know them. So you can see all of this just right in search. You can add products if you've got products. I always like to do that because I like to showcase a visual whenever I can of a product or even a service. If you're an accountant, think about how you can show that in a visual. Maybe it's showing somebody with a whole bunch of receipts everywhere or in a shoebox, and all of a sudden now they've got a nice neat ledger. So think of ways that you can visually promote that. If you don't know how, go on to TikTok or Instagram Reel and take a look at how other people in your industry make that good visual and see how you can also use that to grow your business and to make it visible and utilize those photos, right? You can also put now the real name. So you can adjust that here. You see the little pencil here. You can edit the name to what people know you in town. They may not know that you're just Vince's Village Cobbler or just Vince's. So you can put that there. You can also now add the nine subcategories that truly show what makes your business so very unique. So put that in there as well. And of course, that description, all of that actually weighs on how relevant you are, that first part of Google's algorithm. Now, here is where businesses do make some mistakes. Let's say you said, I don't want to show my address on Google search and maps. So you answered no at that section. You want to suppress that address. Well, in here then, if you suppress the address, do not drop and drag the map pin anywhere. The minute you do that, it is now a signal to Google that you do want your address to show up. But if you don't, just leave this alone. Don't even mess with the pin. Now, for those of you that do have a location, let's say your pin is not in the right spot. That happens sometimes. You can drop it, drag it there. But understand it takes time for Google to confirm this. It will not make this change until it's confirmed it. The confirmation either happens with the satellite, which flies overhead every 30 days. If you're like me in Midland, Texas, and it's a dusty day, Lamisa is blowing down the road, you can't see anything without anything from a satellite, it may need to pass again. In fact, it could take 90 days. And if it takes a few passes, then they'll send the Google car out to verify whether or not this is an actual location. That is when your pin will change. So it does take time, but it is a process of it because there is confirmation. That is why Google's the number one search engine in the world is because people do go there when they want to look at the correct information. So again, if you have a home-based business or you just don't want to show up that you your, your business location to show up for any reason, whatever it is, then do not drop and drag that pin anywhere, okay? So do know that your service areas, I talked about that, you can actually decide on service areas. If you didn't add them already earlier, you can add that here at the same spot. Just leave this alone if you do not want your address to show up. Your hours of operation, you can choose even your basic hours as well as any additional hours, special senior hours or drive-through or curbside delivery hours, all of that is available to you too. 
Maximize all of those because it's really important. Google's algorithm is looking and confirming this. And remember what I asked you earlier about how many Google tools that you're actually connected with? Understand when you have all the Google tools firing and connected together, so they're all active, they're all connected together, now Google algorithm is getting several signals that your business is a real business, a viable, viable business. And now it encourages and actually promotes it higher in a Google search because now it knows the information's correct. Remember what I said about why Google's the number one search engine in the world. So you can keep your information correct here. The more you interact and utilize this and connect it, the higher you're actually gonna show up there in search. You can put your products here so you can actually showcase that within your site, but showcase that here too. This is nice because it can show up in your Google business profile. And then also services. You can have the services and utilize that, which the algorithm actually picks up from the other industries, other similar industries, but you can also put your own there. So you can customize and add your own. Bring your photos in, drop and drag. This is pretty self-explanatory. As you walk through, make sure your photos actually give a good visual <clears throat> of your brand. Remember what we said about visual branding and consistency. You're gonna get bored with your information before anybody even realizes you exist. Just understand that is a known thing with businesses, especially when we're trying to be very creative in our marketing. And then now you can promote your business. And there's several ways to do that. I'm gonna cover a couple of them before we finish up today, okay? But number one, before we do that, I want you to remember to look at your insights because if you're not measuring, you're not marketing. One dollar or one minute spent that is not lifting the bottom line or getting you closer to your goal is one dollar or one minute spent too much. You need to know, socials, yeah, they're free, but they're also very time consuming, right? So your time is more valuable than money. And look at this, is your Google business profile doing what it needs to do for you? Do you know who the people are that are coming in? When I'm working with a lot of service-based industries that are local and they are really doing business by calls because maybe they're a heating and air conditioning company and you know people aren't just gonna go to the website. They want to call and have somebody fix this right now, it's 102 degrees and I want it to be cool. They, I actually look at calls and we have call reports that we look through and I even ask them to look through and make sure that it's the right area, that if they don't serve that area, we can go ahead and let Google know and teach the algorithm that that's not an area that you serve. So look at your insights because that will help you be able to adjust and then focus on the best target market for you that gives you the most pleasure and profit. And remember what I said earlier too, you can post updates. <clears throat> understand that yes, your posts are still visible on Google search and maps, but they're not highly visible or elevated in Google search and maps, especially the first page of Google, unless your updates are posted every five days, okay? So it's not a set it and forget it thing. You need to post every five days, your updates are most visible then. Offers are visible until the offer ends. Let's say you have an offer till the end of July, it's gonna show until then. Or events, let's say today's webinar, today's boot camp was an event that you wanted to promote Texas Tech, so you could do that and you could have it then not be visible after today or as this actually starts, so it wouldn't be visible anymore, but it would be visible until then. So this is what that looks like on an actual Google business profile, okay? So you see that update, offer, and then event. Really good visibility there when people wanna know, go do or buy. Okay, Ooh. all right, sorry, yeah, the browser froze. Sorry about that, everybody. So, yeah, I'm not sure what happened either. 
it, just one of those moments. <laughs> Don't control the internet. Wish I did, right? So let me just cover reviews before we finish up because reviews are so important and people go to third-party validation to find out whether or not a business listens to them and whether they do good business. Here's what to keep in mind. If you want to stand out head and shoulders above your competition, say thank you for good reviews. A lot of times people look at the negative reviews and they focus on that, especially us as small businesses. We read that and we want to remedy those first. But if you say thank you for a good review, you're going to stand out head and shoulders because 97% of businesses don't say thank you for a good review. So just say thank you. So that's perfect to say. But understand, if you've been in business any amount of time, you may get a negative review. Now, there are a lot of trolls out there who are just trying to egg people on. They have nothing to do with your business. It's fine to ignore those or even come up with a statement like, I don't see you on our customer roster, so I don't, but I'm here for you if you have any questions. But if you get a negative review, this is how you handle it. You use this phrase. That's not the experience that we want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you contact us here? Then you put your phone number, your text number, your email address, your, the link to your contact form, your link to WhatsApp or to Messenger, however they can contact you. Because this really showcases to all of us lurking that you actually listen. So again, it's that's not the experience that we want for you or that I want for you. I'd like to learn more without jeopardizing your privacy. Would you please contact me here? Then you put the link on where they can contact you best. This is really important because it does truly take something that is could be completely private and keeps it private. Understand I've worked with credit unions and banks and I have seen people give their routing number, their account number and their password on a public facing review because they thought they're just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody and they didn't realize it was public facing. It also takes the fight offline because we don't have any time to win a fight offline. And the more we interact with a post, the more popular it becomes and shows up higher in search. And then also it might help you actually fix things because sometimes a bad review is just a complaint in another format. And now you can adjust it and turn somebody from an enemy to an advocate just because you listen. And it shows all of us who are looking at your business for the first time that you care what people say. All right. So I wanted to leave you with that. One last thing before I do leave you is, let me see, I'm gonna go here, is if you've given your password to your Google account away, understand that you need to change that after we get off here, right? And what you're going to do is you're gonna add users and you're gonna decide on the role. You are always the primary owner, which means you're the only one that can shut down and shut out people from the business. You can designate, designate somebody as an owner. That doesn't mean they own the business even, but they have all the ability to do what you do except for shut you down and shut you out. Or you can decide somebody's a manager role, which means that they can do everything that you can do, but they cannot shut you down, shut you out, or add additional people, right, that you haven't already approved. So you can choose any of those roles. I wanted to leave you with that because a lot of people give away their Google business profile or even their Gmail and Google account password because they want somebody or an agency, a freelancer to work with it. And they don't realize they've truly given away the keys to the kingdom and Google cannot see that person differently than you, the owner, which means you could be shut out of from all your great reviews, which would be just devastating and is for many businesses. All right, I'm here to answer your questions, but we are at time. Again, you're gonna get a copy of today's slides and if you say yes right now, you want a copy of today's slides, but if you've got questions, please ask your questions. I'm going to try to scroll up to answer those questions. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.